Hello, it's um, AWS's very own Julian Simon. How are you? Well, I, it's Friday, but uh, yeah, I'm still standing. So uh, happy to have a chat with you. Thank you so much for making time. I appreciate it a lot. I mean, what's what's reInvent like for you? What's it like on the other side of the uh, of the microphone or screen? Um, uh, well, you know, it's it's uh, it's definitely different this year. Um, in previous years, you know, I would I would look like a zombie. I'd be you know I'd be running around in the in the Venetian or uh, you know the MGM, just running from from one session to the next or uh, one interview to the next. And um, so this year is different. You know, I'm not running around. I'm actually sitting around a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it, but it's good. I mean, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually finalizing a few blog posts nice. uh, that are still uh, coming out this week. So lots of editing and, and rec recording some, some tutorials, some how to videos. So, you know, it's a different experience, you know, less running, more content building and no jet lag, which yeah. is a positive thing. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can relate to everything that you've just said. My feet very much uh, oh, yeah. appreciate the fact that I'm not there sure. right now. Sure. One thing is I do the, the, the hoodies. I, I've got my hoodies from previous years. I couldn't yeah. even dream of wearing a hoodie at the temperature it is here right now. So um, I'm missing that. But hey, it's, um, it's a small price to pay. And um, yeah. A, a bit of a fire hose of information coming from all the social media streams and sure. the like, um, but you know, keeping keeping abreast of it. Um, obviously, a lot of things have happened in the machine learning space. Um, lots of lots of us are yeah. very excited about everything that we're hearing in this space. Um, um, Andy Justice's keynote speech um, had quite a lot in there for us mm -hmm. to 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 break apart and to tear into. So one thing I will revisit with you maybe later on in this discussion is what on earth could we be, <laughs> what can be left? I know you're not going to give away anything, but what on earth could be left? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's going to happen? And we, we've got our very, very own keynote next week. Um, but look, whilst I've got you, and obviously you, you literally wrote the book on SageMaker. Mm -hmm. So I just, I wanted to ask you um, some questions specifically about the SageMaker sure. announcements that came out. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll list out the ones that sort of like stick out for me and we'll make sure that I haven't missed anything. But um, we've got Data Wrangler, which is yep. very much part of SageMaker, um, SageMaker Studio. Um, mm -hmm. We've got the ML pipelines as well, which is obviously visualized very much through SageMaker Studio. And then we've also sure. got um, the um, uh, uh, Features Store, so SageMaker yes. Feature Store. So if if it's okay, I'd just like to just cover these off, make sure, sure that I have an understanding of of obviously what they are. I think we probably get somewhat, but where they fit and how they work. Okay. Um, so maybe we start with uh, data data wrangler. Um, yeah, I think data wrangler is, uh, is is the the right one to start with because it sits at the you know at the uh, it's it's an upstream task right it's it's the one thing you need to start with um, loading data and uh, and exploring it and uh, cleaning it uh, engineering features etc so um, data scientists spend so much time doing this the, the vast majority of their time is actually spent doing this and, and of course, you know, everybody has their own notebooks and their own recipes to, <laughs> to do this. You have some feature engineering, uh, open source libraries out there, which are really nice. Yeah. But I think Studio uh, kind of missed the, uh, you know, a built-in uh, built way uh, of doing this. And, uh, and I think uh, Data Wrangler is really nicely integrated in Studio. It's, it's right in there, you know, it's, it's a native... Uh, it's a native experience. Uh, you easily access your data set, and then you have this uh, crazy long list of transformations. I think it's uh, 300 plus right now, and I'm sure we'll, we'll keep adding. Right. And, uh, and you can interactively um, transform the data, visualize the, the transformed data set. Uh, there's this really, really great feature called Quick Model that lets you train um, a model in place in studio in just a few seconds on, on mm -hmm. a sample of the data set. And so you can see the impact of the transformations. So if you're building a classifier, you can see your F1 score going up, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, you can see feature importance. So you, know, you can really get an immediate sense of 
this transformation uh, it helps <laughs> or it actually doesn't and I should remove it. Sure. And then when you're done, you can easily export it. Yes. Uh, and yeah. it, it's a one click thing. And again, this has been uh, a, a huge pain point for everybody. You know, you go through that interactive process of cleaning and etc. And then, well, you need to replicate this for uh, production, right? And sometimes you, uh, you know, you need to rewrite the code or, you know, sometimes people run actual notebooks in production and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. who am I to judge? But I wouldn't <laughs> recommend that uh, simply because yeah. Jupyter notebooks are not written for production. They're written for experimentation. Absolutely. So what about testing? What about everything that yeah. matters in production? So one click and you export to Python code or a SageMaker processing job. Or, uh, or a feature store uh, notebook where you can push the engineered features to, um, uh, to feature store. So it's nicely integrated, it's, it's really cool. And just the last thing I wanna say is actually uh, earlier in November, we launched another data preparation service called uh, uh, Data Brew, which yes. is part of uh, AWS Glue. And, uh, and it's, I think it's, it's a different take. So Glue uh, Data Brew is really the fully managed, very slick uh, experience. It does the same thing pretty much. You have some nuances, but generally you can do the same thing. Uh, the UI is is uh, is an, uh, a web UI. It's not a, it's not Jupyter based. Um, so it's it's actually very slick. I, I like it a lot. Um, and you can apply your transforms and you can run a job that outputs the transform data set. So I think the difference is uh, if you're a data scientist or a machine learning engineer and you want code, right? You need to see the code uh, and you want to tweak the code, et cetera, then you should use uh, Data Wrangler, mm -hmm. okay? If you, are, if you don't care for the code, if you just care for the actual transform data set, uh, if you're not a code person at all, if you're uh, maybe you're a business analyst, maybe you're a, maybe you're a marketing person, you know, you just don't want code. You want to clean uh, data, CSV files, transform them and get the, the, the final result. Then Data Brew is, uh, is probably a slicker and, uh, and more polished and, and easier way to do it. But both are equally good. And I would encourage everybody to check both out. Well, so you, you've answered one of my questions already because I wanted to understand the difference between yeah. those two two services because that's often the way. And we've talked about this a lot with the the other heroes and the other um, uh, people in machine learning in general on this series. It seems to be turning into a series of videos that I'm doing. There's become a little bit of a theme of there are lots of services that kind of a little bit overlap. And, yeah. and once you embrace the fact that that's how AWS works, that kind of becomes your sure. superpower to be able to just to connect in with with the way that things are. So I, 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 I much appreciate that. And I like that, um, that distinction between those two services. So, so the output then of Data Wrangler. So we, we talked about there, you, you can output it as, the, as Python code, as a Jupyter notebook, as a SageMaker processor job. Um, mm -hmm. you, you've got those options. Um, is the expectation then that you would take that and put it into a pipeline? Is that, is that sort of the next logical step? Uh, yeah, so, um, so I mean, everybody's going to do it a little differently, which is why we have those multiple options. So some people will just want the, you know, the vanilla Python code. So they can just go and grab the script and commit it to their repo and add that to their app. Um, some people will just want to transform uh, the, the data set immediately. So the SageMaker processing job uh, and notebook is a good way to do this. Uh, and of course you can replicate this because you have the notebook. Um, you know, some people will want to push to feature store because they uh, they want to use the features for uh, you know training and, and prediction, and and you know some people will also want to automate. So yeah, there's another option to export to uh, to a SageMaker pipelines notebook. Mm -hmm. So depending on how you know uh, how mature, how automated your uh, machine learning workflows are. You, you know, you could use any one of those options. Um, but the, the key thing for me is really, um, you know, it, it's really easy to uh, wrangle, <laughs> right? It's really easy to just explore the data, preview changes, uh, remove uh, transforms that you didn't like or that were not efficient, et cetera. So 
it's a very agile way to do mm. this. And at the same time, it is very robust because once, you're lo once you've locked down your transforms, one click is all it takes to transform that interactive process into code, uh, which you can commit and, uh, and, and, and you know, manage just like anything else uh, and, uh, and um, build into uh, whatever automated process, whatever workflow you have. So uh, sure. there's no gap, right? There's no discrepancy between the, the manual, iterative, uh, oh, this doesn't work, let's remove it. You know, uh, very agile way of doing things. And then the robust, repeatable, automated way of uh, processing data for production. Sure. I, I think it's going to see me uh, Googling and going to Slack, st uh, Stack Overflow a lot less. That's the main thing for me, because <laughs> dealing sure, with and Pandas and, and uh, exactly. NumPy and all that stuff. Yes. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the obvious benefit. Uh, but yes, you have those <laughs> 300 plus transforms. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, I love pandas. I love all those tools, but the syntax is yeah. sometimes a little uh, weird. So here it's like, okay, you know, uh, you know what? I want to rename those. Uh, I want to find and replace all those values in that column. Click, click, click. Fine, right? And uh, it makes yeah. it so easy. And you can still add your uh, custom code if you want to. You yes, can actually that. run custom transforms and yeah. in Python, PySpark, and PySpark SQL. So if you have existing code, you can you can use it as well. So, um, well. I, you know, I think it's um, yeah, yeah. I think it's a very nice addition to SageMaker. Absolutely. And so, just to be just to be utterly clear, this is for for anybody watching this who hasn't, um, who's still sort of like exploring this. What we're doing here is we have we're using a data set um, inside of Data Wrangler, but we're outputting a transform, and so we can yep. then apply another that, version. Yep. Yeah, we can apply version. that transform Absolutely. to yep. to other data, which has the same structure but new data potentially. Exactly. Okay, so 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 that's that's great. And so the the next Next one, just to, to move on to then, was, was maybe pipelines. I don't know if that's the next logical one to move well, on maybe to. Maybe feature store, right? Maybe because, feature, because, I, yeah, OK. Yeah. Well, so and 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 for me, I'm going to be completely honest. For me, this is where I'm, I'm still I'm slightly I'm slightly lost. OK, yeah, it's, <laughs> so, it's so, uh, can I can I can I can I frame it? So so for, for me, you know, a, a, a feature engineering. I understand. So if I have my data set, my data set has got different columns in it, which have um, things in it, which kind of maybe relate to them to each other. Um, and ultimately, I don't want to have to put all of that stuff through into my into my training process. So I apply some feature engineering to maybe combine some of this stuff together. That's one way of doing it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, then I will end up with a data set, which has got an additional column in it, which contains that feature. Sure. And I may turn off my original uh, the, the the source of that feature. Yep. yep. So that's feature engineering to me. Where does where does feature store fit into that, or is it something slightly different? So the the so feature engineering is exactly what you described. Uh, transform original features into more expressive features that help the algorithm understand better, you know, encoding categorical variables, uh, scaling numerical features, and so on and so on. And uh, so I think that the, the benefit for uh, SageMaker Feature Store is, um, is twofold. So the first benefit is um, you only do it once, right? Uh, so if you, have, uh, if you have specific features in, in the data set, why would you run your feature engineering again and again and again? You know, um, you can you can store the existing versions of the of the engineered uh, features and reuse them. So let's let's take an example. So for example, if you have a column in, in your data set, um, uh, if you have a uh, uh, if you have a column in your data set with uh, let's say marital status, right? Uh, so you will have, you know, single, married, uh, divorced, et cetera, et cetera. That's a categorical variable. You apply um, encoding to this. So you create, let's say, let's say we have five marital statuses. So we create five new columns, one not encoded. So that gives the algo, you know, five new dimensions to, uh, to work with, which is more expressive than one column with strings in it. Sure. Uh, you drop the original one. And, uh, and, and okay, so you've done that, right? So you, you've, uh, you've processed that data. Um, 
and you can store it. Okay, uh, so feature store as an offline store, which is based on S3. Okay, so you will store in S3 um, the um, not the transform data set, but the transform features. Okay, so we have feature groups, which are basically, uh, you know, I, I guess you would have one feature group per CSV file or per uh, SQL uh, uh, table, you know, and, and inside the feature group, then you have records which are the, the uh, engineered representation of the rows in your original data set, okay. right? So rows become, re become records and, and columns become key value pairs with a feature name and feature value, okay? So you can do this once and then you have that data in S3 which you can uh, retrieve anytime you want. You don't need to run feature engineering again uh, so you can use, uh, I don't know, maybe Athena or, you know, anything that you'd like. Maybe S3 Select also works. I haven't tried it. Could Data Wrangler? Uh, um, yeah, you could, you, could, you could load them. I mean, probably you could, it's, a, it's an S3 file. So yeah, you could probably load them in Data Wrangler if you wanted. Oh. Um, but mostly I think, you know, you, you, once you have those features in the offline store, then you can use them to build training sets. Right, right. I, yes. I think I think so what, it, what it meant. Really, I think, sorry, what it, what it meant was like you can you can use Data Wrangler to create these features and yes. put them into Data Store. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. exactly. Uh, and once store. they're here, you know, once they're here, then you can query. You've done the heavy lifting already, right? You've done the transformation. You've run your processing job, so you have the engineered features. So now you can go and cherry pick. Uh, whatever you need there. Um, so if you use Athena, you can literally uh, run a, a select, a SQL select command on uh, on the S3 uh, on the offline store, and select you know the the the, the engineered features that you want, and you can build a data set from that. Okay. Okay. So it, okay. it's I think it's the number one benefit. Uh, you know, some feature engineering um, uh, workflows are extremely complex, right? Uh, the thing is we tend to work for demos, we tend to work with uh, toy examples and toy data sets. So it's like, yeah, well, you know, why don't I run this thing again? It takes two minutes, we don't care. But uh, some feature engineering workflows can be very complex and, and, and maybe they're joining data from 20 different tables. You know, it, it's, it's yeah. complex, right? Yeah. So once you have that, then uh, uh, different teams can go and and find in feature store the engineered version and they can they can use those directly yeah and so they're right? finding the they don't have to run the feature engineering process again yes. yeah which is time consuming maybe error prone if uh, you know you, you, it's very hard to replicate exactly what other teams may have done so okay now you have your engineered features you can go and fetch them sure right? and build your training set and so the engineer and then, so, yeah, go ahead. So, go ahead. so the engineered feature that I store um, relates to a particular record that I have, a particular item yeah. that I have in a different table somewhere else. But it's, yeah, a exactly. it's a centralized repository so that anybody working with that data set can go and link that into what they're, what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's, and it's yeah, exactly. machine learning so, focused. Exactly. So uh, if another team has, I don't know, customer records, right? Uh, and uh, and they want the engineered version for a particular feature for customer uh, one two three four five right then they can just query the 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 feature store and say hey you know give me uh, the the value for feature X Y Z for customer one two three five. Okay, yep. and and you know maybe generating this engineered feature was a, a, a highly complicated process that another team built. Maybe you have a dedicated team, you know, a data engineering team working only on this. You yep. know, and and then you have uh, product teams who just want to grab uh, or modeling teams who just want to grab features and say, okay, this is we know this is the right feature, and uh, we don't want to know how it was built. We know it's the right one. The other guys did that. <laughs> So we can grab those features and build our data set from there. Okay. So is it is it is it fair to say then that the the feature store is is it, the reason why it exists is because um, you can store um, 
uh, schemaless data in there, I guess, because you're just you, you, this feature is is whatever it is. We don't know at this time, um, but it's in a paradigm that a machine learning engineer uh, can get to. Um, if 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 in a world where SageMaker didn't exist, this could just be stored in S3 anyway, or it could be put in a database table somewhere. But but we've, we you, you've put it into this service so that it's there in the world of SageMaker, SageMaker yep. Studio, and in the hands of a machine learning engineer. Yeah, it's you can see it as a as a specialized backend to store machine learning data. Yep. Okay. Right, yep. Uh, so of course you could use S3, you could use DynamoDB, you could use mm anything that you want it's just that here you know we have uh, we have uh, metadata associated to features we have timestamps um etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's just again you know removing some of the tooling that machine learning teams would have to build themselves and say hey you can ingest uh, your uh, you can ingest your features they end up in s3 you can query that easily to yeah. build your data sets and there's also the online store that lets you do the same thing in real time when you want to predict with engineered features, okay? So let's say customer one, two, three, four, five is on your website, okay? And, and you wanna do, I don't know, maybe product recommendation. Right. So you wanna, you know, you wanna fetch, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, user location or, or demographics, you know, uh, well, segment, I, 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 a custom, whatever, metric, you know, a custom metric, metric, which, whatever yeah. feature, totally. you know, whatever feature your model needs. Um, and so you, you can just query the online store in real time and say, hey, give me the engineered uh, value for this feature for customer one, two, three, five. Understood. So the benefit here is the, the, the business app right? The app, um, um, the customer facing app and the prediction app do not have to include any feature engineering code, right? Yeah. So they don't need to, they don't need to recompute uh, the fact that, okay, user location is this and, uh, you know, customer segment is this because this was already stored and it's available in a matter of milliseconds, right? So, for obviously it saves you the trouble of implementing that feature engineering code again in your app. And usually it's used in a different language because maybe your machine learning team uses Python and your app is coded in, I don't know, uh, Java, Java or C++ or whatever. So you, you had to rewrite that same code in a different language, which is painful. And even the tiny variation in feature value can change the, uh, the prediction, right? So here there is no, Again, no discrepancy at all because you are using the exact same value that was used for training. Yep, got it, got it. No, I appreciate that description of that. Thank you. We'll have to, um, we'll have to, we'll have to knock on the door of that a bit and play around with it a little bit. Um, sure. So, so, so let's now talk um, uh, pipelines, machine learning pipelines. Yeah. Um, and and for all for for a lot of these things, by the way, yes, absolutely. Seen your YouTube videos as well. I definitely have to put <laughs> links down to those beneath here because um, they Thank are you. they are good walkthroughs. And um, I guess I, I don't. You've done one on Feature Store yet? I don't know you have. Oh uh, yes, I've done it. Yeah, I've done oh, one as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I just haven't seen that one yet. I'd yeah, well, it's, I wouldn't have had the questions if I'd seen yeah. it. <laughs> you know, it's it's a no win situation. If I don't have the content help, out people ping and say. Julian, what are you doing? You know, are, are you sick? Are you, you know, are you on holiday? Where's the content? And then where's the, when I pump it out, it's like, man, it's too much. You know, we can't keep up. And I, all right. All right. You guys are never happy. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. But this, this, this week has been intense and I know, yeah, but I know next I know. week, There's next so week's going to be There's even so better. So, no yeah. <laughs> so pipeline, so pipeline. So, so yes. what, what I'm seeing here is again, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, SageMaker studio implementation surfacing of tools that sort of already exist inside of the AWS um, uh, ecosystem, Absolutely. but that a, that a machine learning engineer um, doesn't, doesn't need to get into the weeds of. So we're talking um, the, the code pipelines, build stages yes. and things like that. Um, but it's also, th there's a bit of an API update in there as well, is there? Because the, the API can yeah. tie this together. Yeah, it's a two, it's a two sided thing. And uh, you know, if, we, if we look at the original problem, um, you know, if you're a, a data scientist or a machine learning engineer, uh, let's face it. I mean, you don't, you're not super excited by DevOps and infrastructure as code. It's not, it's just not your thing, right? Sure. Um, I just want my Jupyter notebook. 
<laughs> exactly. You want you want to build, you want to work with data and build great models. Okay. And of course, you know there are some production uh, gates and, and, and things need to be done right, but you don't want to know, right? You you don't care for that. It's not your job. And on, on the on the other side, um, on the other hand, well, you have the ops teams, right? So DevOps or ML ops, whatever name you want to give them, and and let's face it, you know they care about uh, uh, quality of service and performance and monitoring and security and automation and traceability, uh, auditing, etc. And they do not really care for machine learning and data science and neural networks. Okay, that's fine. So you need to build something that works for those two. Um, those two types of engineers. And this is exactly, I, I think, what pipeline is, SageMaker Pipelines is. You have a data science uh, machine learning side to it where you can work inside Studio. You can use uh, a Python SDK to build uh, workflows, right? And, and, um, and if you've worked with, uh, let's say, scikit-learn pipelines or maybe Spark ML pipelines, this is very similar, okay? So you define a series of steps, you know, pre-processing, training, uh, deploying, or batch transform, etc. cetera. And, uh, and you, these are based on the uh, SageMaker SDK that you know, right? So estimators and all that good predictors, all, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's just a layer, an automation layer on top of that. So you build the steps, uh, you chain them into a pipeline, you run the pipeline, and, um, and it's, it's completely automated and integrated in studio. So you can see the different executions. You see a, visu a visual representation of the workflow. You get information on each steps, you know, model metrics and, and logs. If something blows up, you, can, you don't have to go to CloudWatch. You can see, uh, oh, this blew up. Okay, what's the error? Okay, go and fix it. And, and, and you, can, you can build it just like that. So that's, that's one angle to it. And, uh, and you can go from, you know, train to deploy and work in your sandbox. And that's all good. Now, obviously, at some point, you want to push a model in production. Okay, so maybe let's say staging, right? Maybe you have your dev environment and you're fully autonomous there. And then there's a staging environment or pre-prod, whatever you want to call it. And then there's a prod environment. And of course, deployment to pre-prod and deployment to prod, they need some quality gates, okay? So maybe another team uh, or someone in the team uh, needs to review the model and, and run additional testing and make sure you know, it's, a, it's a good model, uh, make sure performance is okay, uh, latency, you know, all, all that important stuff. So you can't just click and say, all right, deploy to prod and, and fine, right? We didn't do this for, hopefully no one's doing this for web apps anymore and microservices, although, well, well <laughs> maybe some people still do, but uh, well, that's all right. Again, who am I to judge? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's generally not good practice, right? Understood. So if we, if we're not doing this for regular applications, we shouldn't be doing it for machine learning models, right? Mm. Because the consequences could be terrible. So that's why that the other side to uh, pipelines is really an ops side where ops teams can build um, deployment templates. Okay, uh, based on cloud formation, uh, code build, code pipeline, and service catalog, where you end up, you know, publishing them so that your data science teams can find them. Right. Okay, and so this pipeline um, is really about okay. Here's the model artifact. You know, it's been reviewed, it's been approved. Now let's deploy this on an endpoint. Let's say. Uh, Maybe in a, in a different VPC, maybe even in a different account, because uh, SageMaker Pipelines is cross account, right. and 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 let's do this in a controlled way. You know, maybe running extra tests uh, with code build uh, as we go uh, to validate that uh, the, the endpoint was deployed right, and uh, and of course ops teams know how to do this. You know, with the code uh, code build, code pipeline tools, and cloud formation and service catalog, they do do that stuff every day. Mm. So pipelines bring those two things together eventually, right? So um, of course you could use only the uh, workflow SDK, right? Right. Uh, 
you could use only CloudFormation to deploy models and customers already do that. But now you can put those two things together, okay? Build those templates uh, that could be, you know, build, uh, train, deploy, or maybe just deploy, et cetera. Publish them in service catalog and, and data science team can run those Okay, with the, 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 the execution workflow and the quality gate and then the deployment to crowd. So it's, it is really, you know, I'm, I'm, um, it's DevOps for machine learning, right? Uh, so yep. uh, whatever name you want to give it, uh, that, that's what it is. It's bringing those proven uh, practices for continuous delivery to machine learning models, and which, is, which might just be the number one problem that customers have right now on machine learning. For sure, for sure, and it's and it's in an easy way. It's in an easy way. You don't have to go and um, build your own solution. It's it's right there. And those templates you were talking about as well. Um, you, you were talking about service catalog. You can have them, but uh, so there are templates built into SageMaker. Um, yeah, so we have uh, a few studio templates. now just to, to get people going. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you can get started. Yeah. Uh, you can get started. You just need to make sure um, if you if you check the the settings for your studio prof uh your studio user yeah just click on the username there's a slider that you need to enable that says yeah enable SageMaker projects yeah uh, which is exactly that and it, it basically gives you access to the uh portfolio in uh in service catalog with the built-in templates yeah and, right. and of course your teams can add their own templates for sure, I'm sure that th those templates that are in there can become the starting point for for. Uh, yeah, it's, for, for of course, it's better. yeah. You can yeah. start from there. You know, yeah. no one will start from scratch. Of course. course, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Well, now if you're going to start from scratch, you wouldn't be in AWS in the first place. You'd be uh, still trying to like build your own PC. Um. So, so look, I I'm not going to ask you for you know your predictions for what's coming up in reInvent. That seems kind of pointless, and you're not going to tell me anyway. So, no. um, let, let's let's go <laughs> let's go wider than this. Um, let's go wider. Let's go industry wide. And let's look out to 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 more of a future vision. It makes it far more difficult, but you bring it upon yourself for not giving me any clues about what happens next week. Um, so, so what what where, where what what do you think? Um, if I can ask this, what do you, what do you think the the challenges are that we're going to be able to solve in the machine learning space over the next couple of years? I guess where, where, where's our focus? Or where's no? I don't say where's AWS's focus, but where's the industry focus? Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to be a little provocative here, and I think the the our main objective should be to make machine learning boring. Uh, it needs to become uh, something that's you know um, so well understood and automated and 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 reliable that anybody can use it. You know, it's uh, um, for now. You know, I. I uh, it's still there's still a lot of manual work there's still a lot of uh you know uh, dark magic involved with it sure we, you know which makes it fun and exciting and uh and and once you you know you learn the new spells it's like oh wow okay you know i'm a i'm a level uh, i'm a level five wizard now you know i'm a level five machine learning wizard so sure you know it feels good and, and as as an engineer, and a, you know, you feel good about cracking that problem open. But again, if we look at industries and and, and society in general, um, we I think we need uh, everybody badly needs IT in general to be smarter, uh, just more uh, you know more uh, ad adaptative uh, to to you know to, we need IT to adapt quicker to changing changing conditions and and machine learning is really good at that yeah um, but we so I mean there are still there's still a learning curve there's still uh, you know you still need skills you still need uh, you still need too much to get into ML yep and I really hope we get to a point where um, even junior developers, can uh, you know? We understand their business problem, and we understand the benefits of a, of a predictive approach. Can can go and select off-the-shelf services, off-the-shelf models. Uh, you know, throw them into the mix of their uh, of their application, and and just you know solve a problem reliably, automatically, and and move on to the next thing. 
we'll we'll still need experts you know we'll still need people to come up with the next generation of of uh, machine learning uh, breakthroughs um, but that's 0 0.1 or point 0.01% of the technical population. So what about everybody else, right? What about small companies? What about, you know, everyone else? Uh, machine learning should be for everyone. Um, it can definitely benefit all businesses. Uh, we just need to make it simpler and, uh, and simpler and simpler so that it's a non, you know, it's not, a, it's not even a problem anymore. It's not, there's no gonna, it should, there shouldn't be any discussion on, Oh well, we need to add ML to this, or uh, or we need to add AI to this. It's like, well, of course, you know, you you have a front end, you have a UI, and you have data in the back end somewhere, and and of course, there's a machine learning model in there. Of course, you know, you have a database, you have a machine learning model. Okay, and uh, and it becomes a component that you add very easily. So I think we we you know AWS is definitely striving to simplify. Um, uh, machine learning as much as possible for every developer out there um, but there's still a long way to go and sure. uh, there's a long way to go but you know we'll we'll, we'll get there we'll get there so it's yeah do you want to get to the point where it's just another tool in the box Ex exactly just yeah. use it just like you would use anything else you know no drama no mm. no particular complexity and uh, you know no need to uh, to have uh, you know a full data science team that you can't really afford or can't really hire. It's, uh, you know, for some harder problems, yes, you'll need that. But for the majority of companies, it's honestly not needed. Look, that's a, that's a really good point to leave it on, I think. Thank you so much. Um, a, a vision yeah. towards the future. We'll see what next week brings. Excited for that. Yes, and, don't, um, miss, uh, don't miss the keynote for sure. Absolutely. On, uh, on the, on, on, uh, I think it's next Tuesday. Yeah, the I 8th. think it is. Yes. Or, or what, whatever day it. that turns out to be for me in Australia. But Well, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's all right. I won't miss it. Could it be the ninth. <laughs> yeah, who knows? But I will who try knows? my very, very best but, yeah. to watch it. Thank you so yeah, much for your time, Julian. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks for clarifying those things on, um, on SageMaker for us. Thanks I'll for put inviting links me. down um, beneath this in the description or whatever so that people can find the uh, the videos that you've done on these things sure. as well because they they are very insightful so thank you very much and um, enjoy the rest of reInvent I will thanks again thanks thank you bye, -bye, bye, -bye. everybody